They're notorious for holding their fists high in the sky, and now a week after violence and riots have erupted in Milwaukee, after a black man who police say was armed was shot and killed by a black officer, the new Black Panther Party has declared there is a war on blacks in America. We may attempt to vindicate the police by saying, well, hey, this man was armed, but the Milwaukee residents know that there's been a war waged against black people that has silently been going on, like it's been going on throughout the whole nation. Brother Polite is a very outspoken leader of the new Black Panther Party, short for NBPP. You can see this video of him rallying his members at the Republican National Convention in Cleveland. The group falls within the National Coalition for Justice and Black Power, and many from the original Black Panther Party say this is not a direct link. The new Black Panther Party say blacks need to defend themselves by any means possible. And when I asked Brother Polite, does that mean violence? He didn't leave that off the table, I'll put it that way. If a man's life is at stake and the person threatening to take his life is wrong, you must defend yourself to the best of your ability. The new Black Panther Party says they want black officers patrolling black neighborhoods, and they also want more whites to get involved in the movement in terms of speaking out against those who are racist. They say those who have the power in education, financial institutions, they're the ones who really ultimately can change the system. Ashley, how did you feel talking to him? He does not speak for me, and well, I want to be you, very clear. But well, what did you take away from what he was saying? I think he shows the disparity that we've been seeing going on when you're looking at these riots on a national scale. I think this is to an extreme, though. Calling it a war between whites and blacks and fanning the flames is incredibly dangerous. I think that there's a lot of people in this room on the starting blocks ready to jump on this guy. Oh, he's a racist. Oh, he's advocating violence. I, I listened to the whole interview. I didn't hear anything that was really all that outrageous. He sounds a lot like... Really? Yeah, really. He sounds a lot like what I've heard over the last... 20 years out of the black community. They're not happy with the way they're being policed. Like, why isn't he frustrated and upset at the black man that pointed a gun at the officer? You know, that's what's incredible to me. It's so no, easy to start talking about. Wait, Tank, I'm talking. You to, can pick any one. No, it, listen to me. Listen to me. It, there is a far greater chance of a police officer being killed by a black man committing a crime than a black man unarmed being killed by a cop. I want to know how you think you know that. I, what are you talking? Because I read, Hank. Try reading some of the research, and maybe you'll have we'll have a better conversation. In my experience with these kind of guys, a lot of them are paper tigers who are saying inflammatory rhetoric to get a reaction, and do not for one minute think that they can get away with blowing away somebody on the street. But that's not the danger. <laughs> th th those who have you know a strong head over their shoulders, they're that's not going to commit violence. They're not. That's not the danger. The danger is a loose cannon who subscribes to what they says and actually commits.